Hello students, welcome to the lecture on Petro Retail Asset Management and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Describe the selection of petrol diesel retail outlet dealers. Discuss the broad guidelines for selection of rural retail outlet. Explain the market intelligence. Define the guidelines for setting up of gasoline retail outlets for two three wheelers. Explain the guidelines for access location and layout of a service station. Let's start with the concept of Petro Retail Asset Management. Indian retail business is the fastest growing business in India. It accounts for over 13% of a country's GDP and around 10% of the country's employment. Indian petrol retail sector is fastest growing sector with a contribution of over 13% in country's GDP. The petroleum retailing industry in India faces significant challenges in the deregulated environment coupled with intense competition and a downward pressure is exerted on margins forcing players to adopt new and innovative strategies. India has deregulated the pricing mechanism for retail petroleum in 2002 enabling new players to enter into the market. The entry of new players like Reliance has increased the number of petrol stations from existing 15,000 to more than 30,000 in the past five years. This will also reduce the average throughput per station and total fuel volumes per player. With the market determined pricing mechanism, prices will have to be lowered, thus reducing margins from fuel products. With limited growth in the number of vehicles, the retail fuel volumes will remain stagnant, thus offering little scope for further improving the overall revenues and margins. Let us now discuss the selection of petrol diesel retail outlet dealers. The appointing dealers for its retail outlets are O's. The oil company follows the following transparent procedure. Identification of locations. The location for setting up of Dealership is decided by oil companies after studying feasibility and the locations are included in the expansion plan earmarking the reservation category for each location. Thereafter, oil companies release advertisement for the locations identified. The candidates meeting the eligibility criteria mentioned in the advertisement can make application on the prescribed format. Eligible candidates are called for interview by selection committee and finalizing the dealer selection. Mode of selection of dealers. The locations identified are advertised under applicable category in two newspapers, one English and one regional vernacular newspaper having wide circulation in the area where the location falls in case of regular ROs and in case of rural ROs in one local vernacular newspaper with maximum circulation in the area and in one state level newspaper having maximum circulation in the state. Persons meeting the eligibility criteria can apply and the selection will be made from amongst eligible applicants after due evaluation process. Direct offers of land can also be considered for development of retail outlets. In such cases, after receipt of such direct offers, weighability of the location will be accessed and if found weighable, advertisement will be released in two leading newspapers which are in circulation in the area. The final selection of the dealer will be on the basis of evaluation on the land offered and evaluation of the candidate in respect of other parameters as provided in these guidelines. How do one apply for petrol pumps, SKO, LDO dealership? After identifying the location for setting up retail outlet, SKO, LDO dealership, oil companies releases advertisement in leading newspaper inviting applications from candidates belonging to the category for which the location is reserved. The eligibility criteria terms and conditions and procedures are described in the advertisement. After scrutiny, the eligible candidates are called for interview by a selection committee. Selection committee announces name of the selected candidate on the close of the interview. Recommendations 
The issues and challenges identified in this include matters that are a direct result of the design and implementation of the fuel tax reform initiative, loss of direct local and provincial funding sources, and a declining purchasing power and other broader program considerations such as inadequate funding and weak program administration. Now moving on to the next topic, we will study the broad guidelines for selection of rural retail outlet. The guidelines are oil marketing companies OMCs shall frame detailed guidelines for setting up of such retail outlets in the rural areas. While doing so, they should keep the following broad parameters in view. The OMCs shall adopt a uniform, transparent, objective and consistent policy across the industry for selection of dealers for such rural retail outlets. Wide publicity is given to such guidelines through website, brochure and at the time of advertisement of locations. Location for rural outlets should not be on a state highway, national highway, as it would be covered under regular dealership, distributorship. Every rural outlet would be HST oriented with minimum potential of 25 kilos. Per month, MS can be added if feasible. Dealer may add agro products for sale through such outlets wherever feasible for making the outlet economically viable. Advertisement for selection of dealer for rural outlets may be given in one local vernacular newspaper with maximum circulation in the area and in one state level newspaper having maximum circulation in the state. In addition, posters may also be pasted in the concerned village, Grand Panchayat office and block headquarters. Relaxation and license of fee recovery LFR may be considered by OMCs. Security deposit may be INR 10,000 and application fee may be INR 100 only. However, for outlets reserved for SC, ST category, the application fee may be INR 50 and there may be any security deposit. In case of location reserved for SC, ST category, OMCs should acquire land before issue of advertisement for selection of dealer other than ST. SC category if the selected candidate is a widow or woman of more than 40 years without earning parents who is eligible for corpus fund scheme land should be made available by OMCs concerned within one year of issue of LOI. Let's know the meaning of market intelligence. Market intelligence is the practice of gathering information about the market for a product or service to help an organization better plan its marketing tactics. It involves researching the available customer base to make predictions about how the product may perform in the future. Market intelligence also includes researching and developing means of increasing sales. It is a type of competitive intelligence. The market is the collective name for all of the potential buyers for a product or service. Generally, market intelligence professionals look at the size of the market when the market is likely to grow and existing market models for each type of organization. Market intelligence can be performed before a product or service is offered for sale or after it is in production to promote continued distribution of the product. The main goal of market intelligence is to improve the success of the product efficiently and at as low a cost as possible. Using market intelligence, a company can make an educated guess about how, when and to whom they should try to sell their wares. It can also help a company decide where to place its advertisements. The cost of advertising can be high, so choosing an ineffective marketing medium can be an expensive mistake. Types of market intelligence include internal and external intelligence. Internal intelligence is gathered by collecting, organizing and analyzing information received by the company during its normal operations. Information analyzed when creating internal intelligence includes accounting sheets, sales sheets and inventory analysis information. Market analysts use data to predict what may happen in similar future situations. Collected data can be examined alone or compared with other types of data to determine causes of market trends or production mistakes and estimate what might happen in the future. 
an intelligence expert analyzing internal intelligence might use the sales and inventory data to predict future sales trends for the company. This data can be used to make early plans for necessary processes like promoting a product or scheduling production. Business intelligence. Business intelligence is a general term used to refer to a number of activities a company may undertake to gather information about their market or their competitors. Some areas often included under the blanket heading of business intelligence are competition analysis, market analysis and industry analysis. Some people also consider industrial espionage that operates for information gathering purposes to be a form of business intelligence. In most cases, a company will either hire an outside agency or create their own dedicated business intelligence group. This group will then gather information from inside the company about how well the company has been performing and where improvements may be made. The group then looks to outside sources which may include public records of other businesses in the same sector, market analysis by third parties and customer survey information. The group may then delve further into specific competitors both by examining their public information and business model and in some cases by using an industrial spy to covertly gather information. Business intelligence systems are contrasted to more classic forms of information gathering by their interdepartmental focus and their general overview towards business performance. They are also unique in their use of advanced technology and techniques to mine for data and to crunch that data in the most optimal manner. While a group in charge of market analysis might have a strong understanding of the particular sector of the market in which a business operates, their lack of the same detailed understanding about specific competitors and the inner management of the company may make their information less useful. In a business intelligence model, all these various forms of business improvement are tied together so that communication is quick and easy and each segment helps inform the other segments so their insights are even more valuable than they would be on their own. Once a business intelligence system is in a place, a company can expect to find improved turnaround times on data collection, ideas for new business initiatives, more targeted marketing campaigns, a much more precise picture of customer needs and desires, and a strong understanding of how best to compete with top competitors. The improvement in business agility that comes with business intelligence is substantial in most cases and allows a company to take better advantage of constantly evolving market conditions. Retail marketing. A retail marketing strategy refers to how a store and its products sells goods to its target customers. A business plan contains information about the intention and goals of the company. It is created before a business opens. Business plans include research about who the company's potential customers are as well as what their needs and wants are. 
A retail marketing strategy should be a part of the business plan. It should include decisions about the marketing mix approach, such as how customers will get the products. For instance, a furniture company may choose a large warehouse, while a jewelry manufacturer may decide to sell only over the internet. Other businesses may select a combination of a brick and motor store for in-person customer purchases plus a website for customer online shopping. All retail marketing strategy decisions should consider the target customer as well as the company's profit. Common retail marketing strategies involve how products and stores are positioned and differentiated. A differentiation retail marketing strategy focuses on products that can stand out from the others competing for the attention and dollars of the target marketing. Retail outlet. A retail outlet may refer to one of two things. The first is a store that simply sells merchandise directly to the consumer. The merchandise is generally purchased by the store from a wholesaler or it may be manufactured by the company that owns the store. The second type of retail outlet is a store that is opened by the manufacturer, often near the factory for the purposes of selling overproduced or irregular merchandise at discount prices. Within the first category of retail establishments, some retail outlets are large stores with a wide variety of merchandise, while others are small specialty boutiques. They are generally in a fixed location such as inside a shopping mall or in an independent storefront on the street. A kiosk is also a type of small retail outlet. Retail outlets also often have online stores as well. Automated retail is self-service robotic kiosks located in airports, malls and grocery stores. The units usually accept cash or credit cards, normally open 24-7. General stores are stores which sell a wide range of essential needs, typically in rural areas. We tend to typify them by images we see of them in US films. Convenience stores are small stores often with extended hours, stocking everyday or pick-up items and typically sited in urban areas. Variety stores, often called dollar stores in the US, are extremely low-cost goods with limited range and selection. Discount stores tend to offer a wide range of products and services, but compete mainly on price. And department stores, which are very large stores offering a huge assortment of soft and hard goods. Supermarkets are self-service units between 30,000 and 150,000 square foot. These are the most common and are usually food-led. Guidelines for setting up of gasoline retail outlets for two three-wheelers. The Ministry of Surface Transport, GOI, has decided to set up small petrol pumps keeping in view the ever-increasing demand of petrol for two three-wheelers. For the state of Punjab, Jalandhar and Ludhiana have been selected for this kind of small petrol pumps with the recommended size of 60 feet depth and 50 feet frontage. However, the basic function of petrol pumps remains service. Definition The terms petrol pumps is to be used as retail business engaged in supplying and dispensing gasoline and essential oils for two three-wheelers only. Traffic requirements Filling station is a major generator of traffic, therefore, while granting NOC the objective for the sitting must keep traffic hazard to the minimum. These filling stations are not be sited too close to an intersection traffic island on the main road. The sitting of petrol station has to be on a road with a minimum width of 40. To ensure satisfactory and smooth movement of traffic, the minimum desirable distance from minor road X section to a station must be 50 and minimum 150 from any traffic island major road X section. Storage. In the filling station, the storage and handling of gasoline should be in conformity with the restrictions and safety standards proposed under Explosive Act, IRC. The Indian Roads Congress, IRC, was set up by the Government of India in consultation with the state governments in December 1934. It is the premier body of highways engineers in India. The principal objectives of the India Roads Congress are to provide a national forum for regular pooling of experience and ideas on all matters concerned with the construction and maintenance of highways, 
to recommend standard specifications and to provide a platform for the expression of professional opinion on matters relating to roads and road transport including those of organizations and administration. It is also publishing journals, monthly magazines and research bulletins. The IRC is a registered society under the Registration of Society Act and is financed by contribution from central government, various state governments and also contributions from its members and sale of publication. President of India is the patron of IRC and generally minister in charge of road transport and highways is vice patron of IRC. The DG, RD and SS is the honorary treasurer of IRC and also its administrative head. A chief engineer of the ministry is normally given the additional work of honorary secretary of IRC for carrying out the work. Guidelines for access, location and layout of a service station. The recommended practices or motor fuel filling stations and motor fuel filling come service stations were initially published in the year 1954 and 1962 respectively. These were later converted into metric units in 1967. These two separate documents were revised and merged in a single document namely recommended practice for location and layout of roadside motor fuel filling and motor fuel filling come service stations and was published I am a single document, IRC 12 in the year 1983. The Ministry of Shipping, Road Transport and Highways revised substantially the norms for location, layout and access to fuel stations along the national highways, keeping in view the increased speed of vehicles, add greater need for road safety due to development of national highways network under various phases of national highway development project NHDP and other development works on national highways. These norms were circulated in October 2003. These norms were finalized in consultation with the Ministry of Petroleum and the oil companies. The Transport Planning, Traffic Engineering and Road Safety Committee H1 decided that the draft for the revised standard might be updated by incorporating the present guidelines of MOSRT and H by Sri S. B. Basu. The draft was modified as per the provisions of latest MOSRT and H guidelines and also subsequent experiences gained while processing the applications for setting up of fuel stations by the side of national highways. The draft was considered and approved by the Transport Planning, Traffic Engineering and Road Safety Committee H1 in its meeting held on 4th November 2008 subject to some modifications. Basic Principles The governing consideration for setting up fuel stations is to ensure free flow of traffic on the road along the fuel stations, minimum interference by the vehicles using the facilities and to ensure safety of the vehicles on the road. Scope Petrol, diesel, gas fuel stations and service stations with or without rest area amenities etc. are hereinafter referred to as fuel stations. These norms are applicable to all fuel stations with or without other user facilities of rest areas along undivided carriageway and divided carriageway sections of all categories of roads that is national highways, state highways, major district roads and rural roads in plain, rolling and billy terrain and passing through rural and urban stretches including towns and cities. For this purpose, hilly or mountainous terrain would be when the cross slope of the country is more than 25%. The urban stretches only for the purpose of these guidelines would be where a highway passes through towns or cities which have been notified as municipalities or municipal corporations. Access layout. Access for new fuel stations along undivided and divided carriageway sections. The access to the fuel stations along the highway road shall be through declaration and acceleration lanes and the declaration and acceleration lanes may be dispensed with or for the fuel stations located along urban roads, rural roads, roads in hilly and mountainous terrain. The access to the fuel stations located on highways with service road shall be only through that service road. 
the declaration lane would take off from the edge of the shoulder taken up to the edge of the right of way ROW of the highway road beyond which the boundary of fuel stations shall start. Its minimum length would be 7 meters measured along the traveled direction of highway. Its width would be minimum 5.5 meters. The shoulder of 2.25 meters would be provided towards the outer side of the axis eggers that is on the side farthest from the carriageway for this declaration lane drainage there shall be adequate drainage system on the access to the fuel station and inside its area so as to ensure that surface water does not flow over the highway or any water lodging takes place for this purpose the fuel station and access area would be at least 300 mm below the level at the edge of shoulder on the highway the surface water from fuel station and excess road would need to be collected in a suitable underground drainage system and led away to a natural course through culvert. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learnt in this lecture. The new look petrol pumps are now the more advanced multi-purpose dispenser petrol pumps. The petrol pumps are computerized thus reducing waiting time which not only ensures accuracy but also saves a lot of time for customers and avoids misconception and arguments. Petroleum retailing is a retailing in which differentiation is possible both in service and product. Locations for setting up petrol diesel retail outlets are identified by the oil company after carrying out required feasibility study and based on commercial considerations. Certificate of eligibility issued for one dealership is not valid for another dealership and therefore a candidate can be considered to be eligible only if he or she has been sponsored for the particular location with reference to current advertisement. Market intelligence involves researching the available customer base to make predictions about how the product may perform in the future.